when white uh, people that wanted slaves went to West Africa, they didn't catch the black, black slaves. They simply bought them. They, when they arrived in West Africa, the black people were enslaving each other. So they simply traded um, manufactured goods from Europe and bought slaves. They bought them from other black people. So the black people in Africa were just as complicit in the transatlantic slave trade as white Europeans were. You're listening to Quorum Radio. What's your reaction when you hear uh, people clamor for reparations, uh, you know, to say that uh, Black Lives Matter and all over um, the fact that police detaining young black men uh, in situations where there's a struggle, sometimes uh, they'll shoot one of them, you know, and, and maybe about eight or nine are killed a year in the United States. What's your reaction to all this? It's my reaction is very simple. If you stopped by a policeman the best thing to do is to do as the policeman says a lot of these in fact the majority of these cases are when people argue with the police or try and fight them or try and escape from them and that's never a good idea to um, try conclusions like that with police officers whether you're in the united states or britain or anywhere else it leads to trouble i think a lot of these young black men they they're the architects of their own misfortune. They're stopped by the police. Instead of just answering the questions, they cut up rough. And when trouble starts, well, it really comes down to their own head. Yeah, so it's a, it, it, to me, it's just a common sense. But, um, uh, you know, it seems like our society, and I don't know how it is in the UK, but I sense that uh, the Black Lives Matter movement is also, has also gained root in your country. Uh, but it certainly has. It what? It certainly has gained roots in our country. Yes, indeed, because the British feel um, a, a historic sense of guilt for their empire, and a lot of left-wing liberal types, white types, feel guilty about the colour of their skin, and they will do anything to show that they are progressive and liberal. And one of the best ways of doing this is to um, empathise for the slave trade. But it's an easy way of doing things to pay money. If we wanted to do something about slavery, we could go to Africa now. We could lean on the African countries and put an end to the slave trade, which is still flourishing there. Right. Why is it that nobody in the Black Lives Matter movement seems to understand, Simon, that there are 9.2 million slaves right now as we speak in Africa? And I would say maybe as, as high as two or three million that are children. Because there's no money in it. The whole point of reparations is to get money. Um, if, you, if that money were to be diverted to fighting the African slave trade, it wouldn't be to any advantage for the um, people of Arabian and um, Caribbean and African origin living in the United States and Britain. They wouldn't get anything from it, would they? No. It's all about, as we say, I don't know if this expression exists in the UK, grifting. They yes. Grift. They want to get money. That's all. Yeah. That's, no, all, that's all it is. About. So, so go, go into a little more detail about your book. Tell us about how is it that you decided to write this book, the research you conducted to be able to, um, to be able to um, begin writing and, and complete well, of course, it. Yeah. Have you interviewed? It didn't take a huge amount of research. The facts are there, but people don't particularly want to hear about them. Everyone knows about the book Don Quixote. Everyone's familiar with Cervantes. Nobody really wants to think about the fact that he was a slave in Africa because it upsets. We like to have a simple view of history. And the best view of history today is one where the white people are all villains and the black people are all victims. And that's the, essentially what we think of. If you say the slave trade, everybody assumes you're talking about the transatlantic slave trade, the trade in black slaves. It's easier to think that way. It's a lazy way of thinking, but it's an easy way of thinking. So it wasn't a question so much of doing extensive research. All the information is lying there on the surface. If you pick up any history book, you can see immediately what's been written. But people don't want to look at that. So it was partly because I was interested to know why people will only talk about the trade in black slaves and nobody wanted to talk about trade in English slaves or American slaves. Right, right. So there were also a lot of Americans that were captured. Is that largely because of 
naval crews and yeah, marine. Naval, yeah, yeah, it was. It, it was American uh, naval ships, um, yeah, merchant navy to begin with, and then even some um, U.S. navy ships were captured. But no one really cares to think too much about that again because. We like to think of America as a powerful country. We like to think of America as one. People blame America for a lot of things in the, in the international world. And the idea that America was slaves or Americans were the victims of policy isn't really, it, it upsets the accepted narrative. Sure, sure. Now, uh, tell me about some of, the, some of the, the more notable slave raids that took place uh, in Europe that really stick out in your mind is especially egregious and what happened to those slaves? Tell us about some of those. Well, for example, in Malta, the island of Gozo was depopulated entirely. 6,000 people were taken into slavery at that time. The entire island was evacuated. The, um, there were Turkish ships, Algerian ships, Libyan ships. They simply landed and they took off the whole population. Um, also happened in England, in particularly in the West Country, in Cornwall and Devon. Um, the ships would land, you know, in uh, the Cornish town of Penzance, it happened. They landed, they bombarded um, the British forces there to drive them to retreat, and then just helped themselves to as many of the people as they fancied to take away. It was a continuous right. process. It went on for a uh, couple of centuries. But wasn't there any pushback or any um, indignation in the United Kingdom to this? You know, demands that the king intervene, that the, the, the Royal Navy um, begin retaliation raids against them and to, to liberate Englishmen that were enslaved? Yes, the problem was that the Royal Navy had run down for a little bit. A lot of this was taking place in the early 17th century, and the Royal Navy wasn't in a very good condition. The king, King James um, I, was taking money for taxes for ships and then spending it on other things, and the Royal Navy ran down. It ended, of course, with the English Civil War, which was largely about this, about the ship money, as it was called, the tax um, for providing ships and the Royal Navy. And there was a lot of indignation about slaves being taken from the West Country. And it was a major factor in precipitating the English Civil War. It wasn't until Oliver Cromwell took over and he started to fight back rather hard against the um, slavers that matters changed. The British have been a divided nation for a lot of their history. You know, right, it's only been the United Kingdom since the 18th century. Before that, it was separate countries. And um, it wasn't really a fighting power in a lot of ways. Right. Yeah, sure. It was a, it was a little England and Wales and Scotland, and, Scotland and they were very... And Ireland, yeah. So right. there were separate yeah. countries fighting with each other for a lot of the time. Right. And so how, how has the reception been in Europe, in the UK, to this book? It's selling very it's well on Amazon. Sorry? Do they try to ignore it? Uh, it's been reviewed and it sells well and it's doing nicely, but it's not, it's, I've been accused of racism because of some of the things I say in the book, simply because I do emphasize um, that it was white people as slaves. I don't think people like to have preconceptions upset, really. Well, let's upset them. Simon, let's upset some. What, what are some of the, the what statements you made in your books that they consider racist? Let's um, give it a little bit more of a microphone. I think they could be worthwhile hearing and propagating a little more. What really bothers well, them? Okay. For example, I mentioned in the book, the, um, you probably know there was a film called 12 Years a Slave. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Okay. It, it was a film. It was made by a black guy and it was supposed to be an authentic history of slavery in America. The book itself wasn't written by a black man. The book was written by a white person called David Wilson. And I mentioned this in the book and it caused a lot of anger. I, I mentioned that, um, you know, 12 Years a Slave was written by a white man and that people in America really don't know much about slavery except what they've been told by other white people. 
um, Harriet Beecher Stowe in Uncle Tom's Cabin, Margaret Mitchell, Gone with the Wind, and that 12 Years a Slave is the same thing. It's a white person's view of slavery. And that really um, antagonized quite a few people because the film itself uh, won Oscars and it became something you know, that was made by a black person. And nobody really wanted to hear that the book was being written originally by a black person. The book, by the way, uses the word frequently, which is quite shocking to a lot of people. If you, I mean, you can see it, it's, it's available freely on the internet, 12 Years a Slave. It's published by Project Gutenberg. It was written by, uh, by a white person, his name's David Wilson. Um, I gave a few other instances of books that people think were authentic histories by black people that were written by white people, and that caused uh, irritation. And how about, how about British academics? Are they indignant at the... At the uh, uh, a shocking idea that somebody should actually upset the apple cart concerning historical narratives on slavery. Yes, yeah, pe people have been very irritated by academics and university types. I've had sort of some uh, an, uh, messages from people that are annoyed about it because it's a whole worldview, it's a whole zeitgeist. The whole idea of slavery is that it's a white crime, it's white genocide against black people. And the fact that slavery was going on in Africa before the white people came and that it's going on now doesn't sit easily with this. It's much better. People prefer to think of it as white people going to slave them to Africa, instituting slavery there, rather than to realise that it's a, a black crime every bit as much as it is a white crime.